Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Monroe from Middlebury, continuing on through the collector's tour. It's late afternoon on October 3rd, 2024. Yesterday I was at Dust Collector number two, uh, one of the very first that I deployed back in June of 2011. And now I'm sitting next to Dust 5, which I put here um, in October of 2015 during the first major expansion of my Dust Collector network. I was thinking on the way up here that um, I gave a little overview a couple days ago about how important dust deposition is for the formation of a well-developed and fertile alpine soils. And yet in many of the videos, um, I'm just sitting in, in a rock field and you might be wondering exactly where, where all that soil is. Dust 5, I think, is a good location in which to explain to you that you, you can have it both ways. Um, you can have um, a really rocky alpine landscape coexisting with well-developed and fertile alpine soils. Um, and the way that that happens is through the formation of a really interesting and kind of peculiar landscape um, that is common in alpine mountain environments, which is called patterned ground. Patterned ground evolves in situations where you have abundant loose rock, where you have fine grain soil, and where you have, this might be the most important thing, frequent um, freezing and thawing cycles over the course of the year. It certainly describes a landscape like this, 12,000 feet up in the mountains. Every time the ground freezes and then thaws again, the rocks and the soil get pushed around a little bit by the expanding of the water turning into ice. And the magnitude or the amount that the rocks are pushed is slightly different than the soil. So if you do this thousands and thousands and thousands of times over geologic time, actually what can happen is that the rocks get concentrated in one place and the soil gets concentrated in another. The rocks essentially get ejected from the soil rich areas. At the landscape scale, what this results in is locations or zones or domains which are dominated by rocks with almost no soil, and they're coexisting with areas that are dominated by soil with still some rocks, but far, far, far fewer rocks. On a sloping surface, this takes the form of alternating stripes, essentially, of stone-rich areas and stone-poor areas. On my way up here, actually, I was able to take advantage of this by trying to hike as much as possible on the relatively stone-poor soil stripes and avoiding the really, really rocky stone stripes. In a flat to gently sloping area, this patterned ground takes the form of almost like a fishnet or a, a lace curtain draped across the landscape where these slender domains uh, that are rich in rocks enclose areas um, that are rich in soil. And on the flattest landscapes where rocks are most abundant, actually you can end up with a rock field that just has these small, completely isolated islands of soil almost floating in it. That's certainly the case here. Dust 5 is located right at the edge of one of these soil dominated ovals. There's plenty of rocks here, uh, but nowhere near as many as there are in other areas. And if we take a look at this uh, in the drone view from above, you can really see the way these soil islands are floating in this sea of rocks. This is an interesting feature of alpine landscapes, certainly, but it's also important for how these systems function geoecologically or hydrologically. The open work areas of rocks allow really cold winter air to penetrate into the ground and facilitate the formation of permafrost. These soil areas um, store a lot of carbon. Water percolating through the rocks is actually a quick way to get down into the shallow aquifer. Certainly when these features are active, um, there's a feedback essentially between the disturbance of this surface through that frost action and what can and cannot grow on top of it, what can handle that level of disturbance essentially. So ultimately patterned ground is an important component of alpine settings like this. Most of the soil which is concentrated in this little island where I'm sitting is dust derived. 
Um, I did work at a slightly different site in the Uintas years ago where I dug soil pits in the center of these features and showed actually that you can go down a meter or more. It's a really surprisingly well-developed soil with high fertility, which is not what you would expect maybe in the middle of a rock field. So pattern ground, dust, it's all connected. Um, I need to get to work on emptying dust five. Thank you for um, tuning in for this video. I'll see you at the next collector. Thanks to the Ashley National Forest for letting me deploy Dust5 here. And thanks as always to the National Science Foundation for their support of the Dust Squared project.